Hi, welcome to the workshop stage on the Photo Zone. I'm Mark Cleghorn. I'm your last demonstration of the day on stage. I'm really sorry. Uncle Ray from Six Sigma is not very well at all and he can't actually make the four o'clock. So I'm very, very sorry. But what I'll do is um, around about 10 past four on our stand, I'll do some of those quick five minute demos and we'll kind of take some of the younger photographers and kind of get them going and give some giveaways and everything else. It's the last day, isn't it? Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you've had a brilliant day at the Gadget Show. We've been here for six days and I promise you today is the best day because we're going home. <laughs> we love you all, but not that much. Um, what we're going to be doing in this session, uh, looking at light, lighting, um, that's why it's called Let There Be Light, funny enough. And then I'm going to take a young photographer in the last 10 minutes and we'll kind of see how we can kind of develop their skills as a photographer and kind of really get some great images. So watch out if you're out there, young people. Um, I mean, under 15s-ish kind of thing. Anyway, um, who am I, what am I? Well, basically, once upon a time, I was a photographer. In other words, that was my whole life. From the age of 15, I basically began to take photographs of pretty girls. It was a good way to actually pick them up. That's what I got into photography for. Um, um, then I realized I actually quite enjoyed it. And so at the age of eight, 18, on my way to university, I got a job with a photographer, and I never went. I basically stayed the rest of uh, my kind of three or four years with him um, before I opened up, in three years about, I opened up my first stu uh, studio at the age of 21. Shop-fronted high street studio. I must have been absolutely mad. Anyway, I was lucky enough that six, 16 years on at the age of 37, uh, we pretty much uh, made enough money to retire, and that's pretty cool. That was all for photography. So I promise you, if you're out there today, if you're a, biz a businessman, there is a good living to be made, even though we say we're in this recession thing, I don't believe in recession, it just means you've got to get better in marketing. But we're not here to talk about that, we're here to talk about being good photographers. And that's the next big, big thing. If you can be a better photographer than the guy down the street, then there's more chance a clients can be willing to pay more for you. So if you are one of my clients in the, in the past, I apologize for getting you to spend so, so much money with us on photography when you could basically do it yourself, it's just marketing. What are we going to be doing? We're going to be teaching you how to basically shoot like the pros. We're going to be using some simple gadgets, some simple techniques to guarantee the images that we're, we're going to shoot live to screen. Uh, so as long as all the technology works on the last day, I'm surprised we haven't got any gremlins in the work. But we're going to be looking at light. That's what it's about. Now, if you were here with my first session this morning, you'll know that my gadget number two, but it was on the verge of being number one, because that was the very first gadget I ever bought past my camera, is a light meter. And this is essential for us today because we're going to be using flash. I am going to start in TTL. So in other words, we're going to be using some simple studio, uh, uh, sorry, um, on-camera flash, uh, small little flash speed lights we know them as to produce the flash. I'm going to start in, T in TTL, which is an automatic way. Um, why? Because I want you to see how simple it is. Because it is, I promise you, if you've got the right kind of gadgets and you know what to do. And then what we're going to do is kind of rip all the technology apart, get, get rid of that, and we're going to go back to being real photographers. We're going to take control. It's a bit like, I'm old now, so I drive an automatic car. But the automatic car still has go fast now speed, yeah? Um, if it didn't have that go fast now gear, then basically, of course, I wouldn't do that, otherwise we get points. It's not worth to be advised about for. But if I didn't have that gear, I probably wouldn't drive an automatic car. As it is, it has the op option, so I'm kind of doing that. As a photographer, I reverse that. In other words, I want a car that, uh, a flash, you could say, that's in manual, so I can run it as I wanted to the whole time. But when I become a bit of a lazy devil, or when I need it to work for me quick, quicker, I'll swap it into an, aut an automatic mode. So knowing how they both work is, is pretty much not essential, but it's usually a good idea, especially if you're really trying to move your photography to the next level. Now, most of my time is spent as the training director for the Photographer Academy and Photo Training For You. That's really where all my kind of time is. We make film, we, all, we also do our online photo critiques, our qualifications, and you see me here on stage doing my thing as it were. But let's not forget, at the heart of it, it's about taking a better photograph today than we did yesterday. That's the key thing as far as I'm concerned. I just want to take the next best photograph. If you think you've all taken by now the best photograph you'll ever take, then basically you may as well get up and get out because that is never going to be the thing. I, I've always got something to learn. I've always got something to actually kind of uh, watch and kind of absorb myself. We've got 11 other photographers who make training films with us on the Photographer Academy, which kind of even keeps me uh, interested as we're going through it. We're going to be shooting straight into light, to Lightroom, which is basically a piece of software by Adobe. And uh, all this is going to do is basically allow me to... Um, just um, kind of show you instantly the images 
um, how they're going to kind of come up on screen and so on. Let's keep it simple. Let's go right back to basics. Let's go back to one flash. Uh, you know this morning, if you were here at 11 o'clock, we went through the kind of the top 10 gadgets that I love and I use pretty much each day. And we're going to start off, in fact, with um, one of those gadgets, which is the TTL ca cable by Lasterlite. Um, I have quite expensive equipment as well, things like pocket wizards, things that I can control in a very sophisticated way, but probably you know, too, too much money for the entry-level photographer or the enthusiast to really get going with. So I've opted for something like a 23 pound cord that will control the flash. They're in double the length of these now as well if you want to actually go for that. I'm using another gadget, in fact one of the gadgets we talked about but we didn't use. And that is the last light easy box speed light. It's a, a, let's show you over this side first then I'll bring it back to you I promise, right? It's a double layered or double diffused soft, a soft, soft box which allows us to diffuse this small flash behind into a much, much soft, a softer light. And that helps us diffuse the, con the contrast levels. Because we might think about shadow, that it's gonna kind of help, help us soften the shadow. It doesn't really, it softens the contrast. And it softens the contrast so much that we see less and less of the shadow behind or on the opposite side of the face. So it's kind of different ways to think, uh, think about some te techniques. What else we got going on in here? Well, basically, simple flash speed, uh, speed light. We'll talk about that now in a minute. I've got a, a battery, pack here made by Quad, uh, Quantum, probably too, uh, too much money for any photographer, <laughs> whether they're pro or semi-pro. It's a real shame, but I've been using these similar packs to these for the past 25 years. Um, and what it allows me to do is shoot very, very fast with flash, uh, fully, fully rechar uh, recharges my little speed lights here in uh, around about a, sec a second. So that's full output to full recharge within a second. Don't do that too often, otherwise you're gonna find yourself burning out your flash gun and going to get that repaired, because it's quite an expensive thing to do as well. Because remember, um, I, I talked about this small, uh, this morning, that these speed lights, let's just take off that umbrella for a minute. I don't think it's gonna rain. Um, but these speed lights, lights are basically explosions of gas. It's frightening, I know, and, and it is if you stick your hand on the front, you, pu you pop this on and off, you'll basically get not a burn mark, but you'll really feel the heat. And that's one of the reasons that if we put anything in the front of it, especially if it's coloured and it gel, we don't want to actually make it stick to it through heat. So key, a key on that. But basically these speed lights are little kind of powers of flash that we want to kind of light the scene with. Now because of their small size, more often than not, we're trying to make them bigger. And if you're kind of getting into photography more and more, you'll often hear the saying small flash to big, to big flash. That just doesn't mean from speed, speed light to studio flash, but it also means increasing its physical size. And that's why we, we, uh, we would use little soft boxes like this, or bigger soft boxes, or in fact what we're going to be using later on is an, um, an umbrella, to physically increase the size of it. When you're looking to buy equipment within photography, I, the first thing I would say, never buy it at a show. <laughs> because it's an in, impulse buy. And for those of you with kind of bags already, <laughs> suckers. Um, but um, um, and that's what we all rely on, you joining up at these shows. That's why we always give a seven day money back guarantee. It's easy as it for us. Um, but when you're looking at these gadgets, really look at them, really look hard and long and, and kind of see, try get some kind of advice from kind of friends and fa the family or camera clubs and things really, if you've got no experience with it. But basically this light source, this size, is only big enough to do this. That's it, all right? The, fur the further I take this little spot softbox away, it becomes more like a spotlight, and that's a bad thing, because obviously then it would be soft, um, but it, it becomes a soft light, because it's controlling the size of the shape of the light. However, when we use just the raw flash, and it's very close to the, sub the subject, like we would be here if this was me, um, this would be a very harsh in the, con uh, the contrast, very bright here, very dark here. However, the further I move away from that light, it in fact becomes soft, softer because it becomes more diffused and it kind of separates around and so on and so on. So basically a hard flash now close to me would be very hard, but the further I move it away, it becomes a softer light source. That becomes the complete reverse when we control it in its shape like we've got going on here. All right, T uh, the TTL cable, this is gonna fix onto my hot shoe. And the hot shoe is the little silver, the silver thing on the top of the, cam the camera where we usually put a little flash gun. 
Now, flash guns come in many different size, sizes and powers. That's really down to you, obviously to do with bud budget. But these things are not cheap. So, you know, these things here, I mean, are not cheap. So look wise before you actually invest. I would all, always say the very first flash gun that you buy should be the manufacturer's flash gun, unfortunately, even though they're the most exp expensive ones. And the reason to do that, they have all the technology that communicates with a similar kind of body like we've got here and so on. So I don't want to spend too much time kind of wasting us. Um, we're going to switch on the flash. So I've got my, ba my battery pack here. Switching on the back of the flash now, and then I need to switch it into what is going to be the TTL mode. Just by pressing my mode button on the back of the speed light, and it comes into T TTL. Um, some of the speed lights, remember, if you've made some adjustments to them the, pre the previous time, that had set on it plus two thirds. Uh, we haven't got time to talk about that, but ba uh, basically what it means, it's increasing the amount of power and not just what it thinks it needs. So what I can do here, Princess, let's just kind of drag this in, um, stand it up. Cassie's one of our ballerina models, um, as well as one of our, our fine art models as well. Let's just go basic, um, just lean in towards there. Just go to her hand, hand here, hand on hip. That's gorgeous. Real diva. I'm, she's not really, she's lovely. Okay. Um, I'm just going to do nothing. So in other words, I'm photographing a subject in a nice location. I'm putting in just a little bit of lighting. I'm focusing onto her face. And basically, the flash is doing the rest. In other words, it's giving my illumination or it's giving me the, my direction to the light source itself. And because this, the flash is in an, an automatic, uh, that's what I said, I set it to, the TTL, um, I don't really have to do a lot of work. However, the problem with TTL, as you zoom in and out with your lens here or with your feet, you will see less or more of the background. And by seeing less or more of the background, the flash goes, oh, I'll shut down a little bit more or I'll open up a little bit more power. So in other words, our exposure is going to change. And that is probably one of the most frustrating things for many photographers when they work in TTL is that they find half of their time is in the post-production finishing is going to the uh, image and adjusting the exposure. Now, once I get off this kind of T, the TTL part, we're going to start to work in manual exposure, which means it doesn't matter uh, what, hap what happens as long as the distance to the flash to the subject remains the same, then we're going to get the same images. And you'll see as we go along now. Let's do a couple of shots first. I'm in basic color mode. That's gorgeous. If Cassie looks away, as she just, just did, there's no light on her face there at all. And because she's turned this big part of the face to me, uh, this is what we refer to as flat or broad light in this point. It's technically flat because all the ear to nose is visible and it's being lit fully. So it's flat, all right? Um, if you just look to here for me, that's gorgeous, and do the same thing. Because she's still looking off, but we, we don't have a profile image, we've got a little bit of the shadow side of the face visible when it comes there. This is what we refer to as broad lit. Um, and this will, both of those techniques, okay, will make a, su a subject look fatter. And there's not a client on my books ever that has wanted to look fatter than they are, not even me. Okay, I'm still on my diet. It's not working very well, as you can tell, but hey-ho. Right, let's do the same shot, but let's now really start to thin her down. And she's a beautiful, thin model. Obviously, she's a dancer, very, very fit. She doesn't take the lift in the, ho at the hotels at night. She runs up the stairs. Okay, sorry, did you see that? I, I didn't say it black. Okay, can you do the same pose for me again? Leaning against the, the thing, looking off towards the side. That's beautiful, looking there for me. Now, because I'm going to light the narrow, if you keep that pose for me, because I'm going to light the narrow part of the face here, you'll see that when it come, comes up, now we've got a lovely, what is referred to as narrow, light, narrow light, lighting or short lighting. And that gives us this more depth, this more three, the three dimensional. Just exactly what I said to you is going to happen when we work in TTL mode. Um, remember the flash's job at this point, it thinks, is to control my exposure for me. In other words, give me the amount of power that equals the triangle of ISO, shutter speed and aperture. Um, but as it is, it sees itself in that white screen and goes, I've got enough, switch off. And at this point, to increase my exposure there, I have to either visit the flash gun and put in a plus, in this point, point I'm putting on a plus two thirds or I could go onto the back of the camera and I could adjust the power there same shot again for me darling looking in the same direction that's beautiful just there 
So the same shot, again, but now you'll see it lifting the expo exposure. This monitor is much better than the one over there, by the way. But um, can you see the difference there? But I'm having to manually go in and adjust it. And that is absolutely wrong. Because as I move away, or I kind of get closer into her, because I've got this light area and the dark area, uh, dark area the flash is trying to guess tone. And, and that's what I don't want to do. I just want it to perform like I'm telling it to perform. And TTL doesn't work in that way. It's looking for 18% grey the whole time. So what I'm going to do now is take away my TTL cord. I'm just going to kind of uh, loop, loop it up there. Because I've taken it out of the equation now, just let me, first of all, take it up there so it's out of the way. And now we're going to introduce what is um, a kind of a, a trigger and a receiver. I'm going to be using uh, an expensive little piece of kit called the Ellingcrom Skyport. It's not that exp expensive, but it, uh, it, would, it would be for some of you. Um, but I, I believe that when you buy once, you buy for life. So in other words, that's what I was saying to you before, just don't buy at shows for the sake, the sake of it. Think about things before you buy, because basically you're going to be keeping them for a long, long time. So now this is basically not connected to me at all. So if I take the photograph as it is, even though I've put what is a receiver over there, when I take, take the photograph, basically there's nothing going to go off except for the ambient light source. That's because I don't have a receiver, oh, uh, sorry, a tro sorry, a transmitter attached to the hot, the hot tube. And it's the transmitter that will hopefully, if I've done it right, <laughs> well, it helps if I connected it up anyway, um, but it will send the signal from me to it and then it will give me the flash. So basically all that can go wrong is that I have put it too taut and it's stretching the, ca the cable out. Let's put that in again. There we go. So that is connected via a cable into the flash and basically every time I fire e either my test button on here or I take a photograph on that, that will basically give me a fire and will kind of sig a signal. But because, let's do it for real. Let's just shoot as normal. I haven't set up the power, so we don't know what I'm going to produce. But I would never work in this way. The first thing I would do is go to it, measure the power, get to the working aperture that I decide upon, depends on the depth of field. And then obviously from, uh, from there, we're going to create the image. But let's just take, take the shot. If it's right, it's luck. But we don't, uh, we don't rely on luck. We do rely, uh, rely on technique. So let's measure. It's not bad, in fact. <laughs> It's not supposed to look like that. Okay. Anyway, um, but let's uh, kind of flash again. Meter in, popping the power on. And whereas this morning we worked in the ambient mode that we were in here, as far as the amount of illumination, or from our LEDs. Do you remember we were using those LEDs? Anybody was here? In fact, I've discovered something. After six days of use in that product that I just got, it has a flash in it. I didn't even know. So you know I was criticising it for being £200 compared to the little one that I bought in Halfords. The benefit that has a flash, and now it is absolutely worth every penny that I paid for it, so thank you. Uh, there was a couple of guys who said, do you know that fire's flash? I went, no, it doesn't. I went over there and had a chat with a few guys, and it does. So anyway, meter in here. Um, this is giving me 125th at 4.5 at 800 ISO. That's what the meter reads. If I had set a different ISO on here, it would give me a different exposure and so on. As, as that is, let's see what is on the, ca uh, the camera. Well, basically, it has 400 ISO, f4, 4.5, at 1 60th of a second. The only thing wrong there is the 400th of a second. The camera, the camera set 400, the meter's on 800. So to match in the expo exposure from the flash to it, it basically has to have the same triangle. In other words, the same ISO, the same aperture. Shutter speed is basically not really used within flash. I'll explain that to you now in a minute. But really now, if you do the same shot again for me, darling, even though it might look a bit darker to you, I promise you that is the correct exposure coming through it. Why? Because I've metered it and I've set it control. So again, it's about consistency, which means the great thing from there is that wherever I am, let's see how far the, ca uh, the cable's going to stretch. So, remember where we were at before. Lead coming through, lead coming through. Okay, let's go out. Can you just push that out there for me? Thank you very much. Pull it out, thank you very much. Sorry, just coming back by here. Okay, so what I can do now, of course, I can start to use some of my surred, uh, surroundings as a part of my photograph. And because I'm, I'm using the, ra the radio trigger, basically, it's going to 
take its, sig its signal. Whereas originally, of course, I was being controlled by the, thank you very much, sorry about choking you. Um, it, I was being controlled by the length of that t uh, the TTL ca uh, cable itself. So that just kind of goes to show to us that what we can do there is anything, anything we want to. The key thing to begin with is get out of the habit of using your lens in the wider angle part, okay? Unless you want, obviously, this kind of wide angle re a reportage look. As a rule of thumb, we refer to racking out the lens. So in other words, that is a 24 to 105 Canon zoom lens. I think it's a great all-round lens for studio, perhaps for the weddings, as the basic images. Not for the portraits, that's a different thing altogether, we'll discuss that later on. But the 24 to 105 gives me the ability to go wide for editorial or kind of then going into the, port the portrait lens. And what I mean, mean by that is, let's do the same shot, darling, looking over towards the light again. As gorgeous as we are, let's just shoot the, por uh, the portrait first. Keep it. And again, wait there, sorry, there we are, beautiful. So that's the first shot, or you can go straight into wide and start to add a little bit more, as I said, of the editorial style of imaging. So it starts to give us a totally different perspective. So we have to start to think about where we position our lighting, of course, because if we position our lighting in the wrong place, it could end up being in, in the photograph, and that's something that we want to think about right at the beginning. So that's our, sim our simplicity of the, of the one light.